All right, hello guys, welcome back to another video. So yesterday in my video, at the end of my video, I wasn't able to get to the responses from Dream and from other various creators as my video was running long already and the situation is updating in real time. So just because I didn't want to miss anything, I decided to wait until today to talk about it. So if you guys are uninformed about the situation, any of you, make sure you go check out my two previous videos on the situation. But just a little recap, there were allegations made against George Not Found. These allegations were essentially that he sexually assaulted somebody. The person who claims that she was sexually assaulted by George Not Found is another big content creator who goes by the name of Katie Bugs. And yeah, initially off the bat, it wasn't looking too good for George as like the whole internet was taking her word and they were trying to ruin his career over it despite the fact that she didn't really show any evidence to back her claims. Not even one single screenshot of like a DM conversation between the two or anything like that. Literally nothing. It was just all hearsay. And that's why immediately when I saw it, I'm like, I'm not believing this because there's nothing backing it. Now, after the these allegations came out against George. He made a statement and he said that he would be doing a live stream where he would address everything. And that's what he did essentially. In yesterday's video, we went over the whole thing. That's why my video is 30 minutes long. And essentially in his live stream, he proves his innocence. He does this by stating what happened in his own words, giving his side of the story while showing receipts to the things that he was claiming. And overall, throughout the whole 30 minutes, I do believe in my opinion that his story was pretty cohesive. And I think he did really good giving his side of the story. Now, of course, that's not every minute detail. Detail, but if you want to hear everything in depth, I do have two other videos talking about the situation. So go check them out. Now, the reason why I'm making today's video is because a lot of people have responded to the situation, those of which include Katie, Dream, AMC, Max GG, and others. And I just figured I would go over that in today's video because, man, this is one crazy situation. So, in my last video, I talked about Katie's response, her initial response from the Discord, where she claims originally she did not want to add to the situation with proof. Because if you guys remember, she did not prove anything, she didn't show anything. Thing. And apparently she doesn't want to create this idea of it being petty drama. It doesn't, it really doesn't, that, that doesn't make any sense to me because nobody sees it as petty drama. She also goes on to say, I also don't want victims to feel they have to prove themselves to people to be believed, which in my last video, I took really big issue with what she said here, because essentially what that does is it sets a precedent that anybody can come out with whatever the fuck they want, like the most insane allegation against somebody else. And then everybody can just believe it as if it's a fact when you didn't show any evidence. She goes on to claim, this will be the only proof or response I have as I don't want to keep proving myself and participate in a drawn out back and forth publicly. I understand not wanting to have a back and forth, but at the same time, you never proved yourself. Like there was no proof given anywhere. It was just other people's testimonies. And if you don't know, this is not fucking court. This is the internet. So it's not necessarily going to work how a normal court works. So testimonies are not evidence. And how it works in court is you are under oath, meaning everything you say has to be right. Because if it's not, then you're going to get locked up and it's a crime to lie under oath. But that's in court. That's not outside of court, outside of the oath. So simply other people saying, oh, this happened or, oh, this person's telling the truth with no evidence is not proof. And I just wanted to make that clear to everybody because people are saying, oh, testimonies are proof. And it's like, these are the same people who want testimonies to be proof, right? As they are in a court of law. But these are the same people who do not believe in innocent until proven guilty, which is 100% a court thing and a real thing. Like you have to prove somebody guilty. They're innocent until proven guilty. And that's why there's a plaintiff and a defendant because the plaintiff is trying to prove that the defendant is guilty and they're trying to prove that to the jury and the jury is the one that makes the ultimate decision of whether or not this person is guilty or not. But outside of the court over on Twitter, these people are quite frankly being the judge and the jury. But yeah, essentially for the rest of this, it's just her talking about how she doesn't want to respond and go any further with it, which is fucking crazy by the way. But then around 15 hours ago, she put out this on Twitter in which it looks like she's addressing the stream. This looks like it's going to be very long and a painful read so uh yeah let's just take a look at it for now this is what i have to say he admitted to touching me that i was drunk that i verbally did not consent in my mind the conversation is over he said silence does not equal consent yet never got verbal confirmation from me chose to move to a sexual act on the couch where everyone was hanging out without asking i don't know how those two facts coexist how can i consent when there was no question how can i consent when drunk i prepared proof on the idea he wouldn't admit to it that he would deny touching me or being there but he admitted it, that I was drunk, and he touched me in front of everyone, that I never said yes, nor did he ask, and I'm still asking for a response, proof, explanations. Frankly, I think it's fucking insane. If you still need more after hearing him admit those two simple facts, then nothing I can say is going to change your mind, but here it is anyways. Now, okay, I'm gonna jump in here after each section, and I'm gonna add my thoughts. He did make it aware that he did touch you, but not in, like, a sexual way. He wasn't in any of those special areas, and he details this also. He 
talks about how you were enjoying it so he didn't like stop because you weren't telling him no or that you're uncomfortable and if you did think it was uncomfortable and you didn't make that clear to him then of course he's not gonna know that and he's just gonna go with it now i'm not saying george here is 100 percent in the right because he easily could have asked uh are you okay with this or can i do this or blah 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 like definitely if she did not want him touching her like at all even if it wasn't in a sexual way she should have made that aware to him because from what george is saying it doesn't seem like she made him aware and yeah for precautions if i were george i probably would have asked like are you okay with this can i do this can i do that blah 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 even if it's just as simple as like putting your hand on her waist or something like you never know addressing the stream as for the i messages he showed outside of instagram dms all proof was him showing a group chat he wasn't even in showing messages from my friends which isn't me the only message showing a response from me was when we asked about the drinking game we played that was after we played it the first night the night where nothing happened i liked the game and wanted to play it with other friends at the convention so i asked for the name don't know how it's relevant to anything okay the reason why it's relevant is because you were saying in your initial allegations live stream that they were in a way forcing you to drink alcohol and i mean with this admission right here this proves that they weren't really forcing you to drink it it was kind of like you kind of wanted to do it so i guess for everyone who's saying that george is in the wrong because you know there was an 18 year old drinking alcohol at their little gathering when maybe the 18 year old shouldn't have been drinking alcohol with this right here i don't think it was his fault at all and i think what he was saying could actually be true and maybe he just didn't know her age and maybe if he did know her age maybe he would have denied her alcohol and been like oh you shouldn't drink this because it's not legal and i don't want to be held liable if something bad happens to you while you're drinking and you're underage but yeah no this part right here shows that she wanted to drink she wanted to participate in that drinking game and for that it's not his fault at least when it comes down to people blaming him for her underage drinking like she refused being a legal adult to be responsible and to not drink because it's not legal and now she's going and claiming that they were forcing her or something like no why i went back because my friends wanted to and i went with them everywhere they went that trip i would also like to clear up this all happened when i went back nothing happened the first night something i also did not admit at first because it's embarrassing and i thought irrelevant but the second night another reason i was willing to go back was i heard of a different creator who was in the room i wanted to meet but when i found out they had left an hour earlier i was already in the uber i had forgotten this until looking back at the text where i said this to a friend the day after but blank brought me and ghosty back to dream's room to see him he said blank was there too with some other people so i was excited because i always wanted to know blank blank left right before we showed up so it's just dream and george then we show up anyway and i'm like fuck okay drinking games etc ghosty leaves to throw up then it's like four of us and we are all drunk it was honestly really weird because i was just drunk and too tired to comprehend what was happening but we were up until 6 30 a.m crying face emoji insta dms they were all fine like i said in my stream i did have my age in my bio like it is to this day the messages were nothing insane just banter like i said i admitted to messaging him after i never hid the fact i was still considering myself lucky for what happened to me even if i was uncomfortable and didn't ask for it i was hating myself around now thinking i was ungrateful but as you can see now nothing insane or proof worthy being said just banter again i felt lucky to be talking to a verified account someone famous someone i had followed and watched for a while i was uncomfortable with what happened but trying to swallow it and suck it up so i didn't have to acknowledge or accept it although our texting ended a month after i can see why people find me at fault but the thought process of someone who went through what i have is a very unique experience which is why i understand why it seems stupid only so many people have been in it to understand now okay this is starting to make me believe that this was sort of like a miscommunication between the two of them because he saw what he was doing as there was no issue with it you didn't look like you were uncomfortable or whatever you were having a good time and with her she's saying the opposite but i do believe that she could have enjoyed it in the moment and then over time after it happened she started to look back on the situation and everything that happened that night and it seems like this is more of like a regret thing now of course from what i'm hearing she didn't consent to being touched or anything like that anywhere on her body despite the fact that it wasn't in any of those special areas but you can't use this regret that you have over a past situation and come out about it and twist a lot of things in order to make it seem like george is like some bad guy and he's like a sexual assaulter you can't do that like i've seen this many times happen where somebody in their relationship after it's over like months later they'll regret it and then they'll come out and try to ruin the other person because of it and make up shit against the other person like you can't do that and that's wrong like it's totally fine to regret like something that happened in the past not be okay 
okay with it, but to blow it out of proportion and try to ruin somebody's whole life and career over it and try to make this person seem like they're a criminal and like a really bad guy, like that's just really messed up. Now this part detailing the information about a Snapchat ad and how they were talking on Snapchat for a brief amount of time, I'm not even going to read this or include it because there's no reason for it to be in here. I walked him out to the elevator. We left at the same time. My room was on the other side of the floor in the hotel. You had a hallway of rooms on one side, elevators connecting them, then the other hall. I was on the opposite side. Therefore, I had to walk through the elevator room. I didn't walk him there. We both headed in that direction. I said, well, bye. And that's when he did the whole elevator is broken bit. Now with this, it's your word against his. So I don't know who's right when it comes down to that. The unmentioned friend. There was a man who was there that I left out. He wasn't there for long. He left early, which is why I didn't mention him. I didn't even know his name, but here is a message from this guy. I've never spoken with him. This is simply a message he sent to someone who was in the room that night too. And it is all he really adds to the situation. He left before anything really happened. And then you can see a screenshot of a message from this guy that she's talking about that she never spoke to. It's from June 25th, 2023. And it says, I'm currently watching George 26 cuddle with Katie 18. And I don't know why we're adding the ages there. It's so weird. Like we're acting as if this is a big fucking deal or something that two legal adults are cuddling with each other. Like they're trying to make it out as if like Katie is like a minor or something or like a child when that is just not the case. And I don't know why you would talk about these two people cuddling in that way. I don't know why you would add the ages like that. That's suspicious. We cuddled. A lot of touch was initiated by him, probably not realizing it. I mean, he was literally spooning me from my left as I faced ghosty to my right. A lot of cuddling he may have felt was personal, but was just me being drunk. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk, close together, but I get it. I was drunk. I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it was to turn sexual. I didn't know it was an invitation. I wasn't going to push him off in front of everyone. He took it a step further in front of everyone, all because he assumed things and assumed he had the right. As a shy person, I could not speak up in front of him and everyone else, let alone say yes. Even if he wanted to take a step forward sexually, why do it in the open? If you're cautious about consent, why not ask? That's usually the first step and more important. Why does everything have to get taken a step further? And may I reiterate that I was drunk. Okay, I really haven't said this yet, but I'm going to give you my very honest opinion on this. I find it so weird that these guys are all cuddling with each other who happen to be random strangers. And I don't think I could ever see myself meeting up with another YouTuber, even if it's a female, unless I really got to know them in person. I don't think I could ever just like cuddle with them just randomly out of the blue and be that close to them because it's not like you know them and you have no idea what their intentions are or what they could do. Like in this situation, he's now having his life and his career ruined and threatened because he was cuddling with somebody he barely knew for whatever reason. Like I just find that to be so weird. And if you're a fellow content creator, just always keep this in mind. Maybe you shouldn't be that close to this person when you meet them, especially for the first time. It's just all weird to me. Now, once again, like I've talked about in the past, this is literally all hearsay and it's his word against yours, your word against his. So at this point, I don't know what to believe except for, do you have proof of this going down that he specifically touched you in areas that maybe he shouldn't have been touching you in? Because like I said earlier, it's innocent until proven guilty. And I really hate to be this guy, but if you don't have proof, like I just can't believe that at face value, especially if he is saying something totally different compared to what you're saying. Like maybe he shouldn't have touched you at all, but just because he touched you does not mean that he sexually assaulted you. She could have moved. Yes, I got up and sat in the same spot, getting up to drink more, etc. Dude. Why? Why the fuck? You're fucking, you know that you were 18 years old and you just fucking said that. This 100% contradicts what she was saying in her allegations live stream where she was saying she was being forced to drink. She was not being fucking forced to drink if she was getting up to drink more. Like what? Holes in your story. This is another reason why I do not believe you. Like, come on. Mentally, I believe in a room on a sofa with people on it. You just sit back where you were when you get up. Mentally, I was also drunk. And even if I were to move, that would be an obvious hit to his ego to him and everyone in the room. A bold move I didn't need to make. I could just deal with it till the night was over. I didn't want someone I had watched for a while or with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. I didn't want to embarrass him or myself. I know it's a dumb thought process. I acknowledge it. Well, okay, I'll be honest and I'm not saying that you were thinking rationally because you were drunk, but I mean, I feel like if you had a problem with what he was doing, either tell him, sit in a different area, and he'll probably understand. But I know you were drunk, you weren't thinking rationally, and it makes total 
total sense. She stayed when her friends left. I didn't make the conscious decision to choose to stay. My friend left throwing up in her hand and I didn't know. She was so drunk she couldn't hold in her vomit and passed out in our bathroom. And the more the night went on, the drunker I was, like I said before, I put up with it in the moment because I thought it was the price I had to pay to be around such big creators. Those last three points, may I remind you, are not an invitation to be sexual or that I wanted it. And if he thought I did, he could have asked. Well, according to his story, he was being careful and it didn't seem like he wanted it to go that far, especially in front of the whole friend group. But that's just what I'm getting out of it. Well, he assumed because your body language. We had just met. Yeah, so why were you cuddling? Why, why was everybody cuddling? It's, it's so weird, dude. Why did he think he knew me so well that he could just assume how I felt? Assume he knew what my mannerisms meant? You didn't know me. Apparently, you didn't even know my age, but you knew what I wanted? No, he assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? It's reminded me, since when was smiling an invitation? When was sitting next to someone an invitation? Since when was being drunk an invitation? Any laughing I did with your hand under my clothes was out of nerves because I didn't think cuddling would result to that. And my shock left me speechless because I had never been to a guy's hotel room, never done anything sexual, and never expected that cuddling meant what it did. I didn't know if this was normal or not. You touched me for the first time. Once again, her word against his, his word against hers. How am I supposed to believe this actually happened the way she's saying it when he came out and said, this is not how it's happening. Like, honestly, when it comes down to it, I think all of this should have been resolved in private. It should have been talked out in private because like, I'm not going to believe this without evidence. Like, I'm sorry to say it. And I feel like bringing this to the internet to try and ruin him is just insane because I mean, what I'm getting from all of this is that this was a miscommunication and I don't think he was actually trying to do anything malicious. Like, I don't think that's what he was trying to do. Now, that's what I think. But I also think that, you know, things should have been resolved in private. It's kind of petty to take it to the internet. I think it really is. You're a fucking grown man who knows better. Why do I have to be strong and pull away or say stop? It's my fault because I was asking for it, hinting at it. I should have known. But never his for not being able to ask a simple question before doing it. At his age. Silence can be consent. A head nod is silent confirmation. In order for confirmation to happen, it needs to follow a question. A question that was never asked? And how is a drunk person supposed to consent? You think I was in the power to consent a 26 year old man to touch me because I laugh? Once again, using the age thing. I think that part of it is being disingenuous because you're both adults. And I understand, oh, he's older, so he should know better. But to make him seem like he's like a really bad person or he's like worse because he's older than you and he happens to be 26 and you're 18, I feel that's disingenuous. But when it comes down to why do I have to be strong and pull away or say stop, I do agree partly because if you want to do something, regardless if it's like non-sexual touching or sexual touching, like you should be asking. That's just my opinion though because then you can avoid things like this. Like I feel like it's too risky these days to just like touch somebody for any reason, regardless if it's sexual or not, without permission. Unless it's like a tap on the shoulder or something like that. But he was drunk too. Personally, when I'm drunk, I don't stick my hand under people's clothes on a couch in a room full of other people without asking. That's just me though. You know, when it comes down to that, he does mention how he did have his hand under her shirt at the waist level. And yeah, definitely, I probably wouldn't have done that if I were him without asking, oh, are you comfortable with this? Or can I do this? Like that definitely was a mess up on his part. But what I say is sexual assault and he touched a sensitive area, the special area that he shouldn't have without consent. No, everyone in the room could verify she was comfortable. My text the day after. Hi, I want to make sure you're okay. I didn't like the way George was so touchy and blank told me about the shirt thing. And I just want to make sure you're all right. She replies and she says, yes, I'm okay. It was definitely a bit weird, but I was drunk. So I didn't feel like doing anything to stop it anyway. And it's over now. So another text message person says, Hey buddy, I wanted to double check with you that George didn't make you uncomfortable at all last night. I saw he was getting really touchy with you. So I just wanted to double check smile. Maybe bro. I have no clue. Like in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit like damn. And especially after verifying. So he knew I was 18 crying face emoji. And I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk crying face emoji. I don't know. I have to ponder on it or forget about it because it's over with LOL. So this essentially comes off in a way that, oh, something happened. And then later on, you started to regret it. And specifically with these messages saying that George was touchy and there was something going on with the shirt, that doesn't tell us that, oh, he was touching her in places maybe he shouldn't have been or if it was around her waist. Like we just don't have enough context here. And plus when it comes down to the quote, everyone in the room could verify she was comfortable. And then she says my text the day after. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You want to know why? Because everybody could verify that she was comfortable in the room at that moment on that day. But the day after when they weren't necessarily near each 
other and she was getting over the drunkness, she starts becoming uncomfortable when people are asking her if she's okay and if she was fine with what happened the previous night before. The wristband. I would like to mention another girl I didn't mention because like the other guy, she left really early into the night. I'm admitting I didn't mention her because she only tagged along one night and didn't do much. I also didn't know her too well. She was friends with Clay and the girl talking to him. I haven't messaged her since that night until today when she reached out. Here are her messages about from that night. Her message to me today and a screenshot of the group chat with just Clay in it. Okay, I'm like watching his stream for the first time right now and I'm losing my mind because the photo he thinks is you is my hand. Well, did he say that he thought it was her hand? Like, did he specifically say that in his live stream? Because the last time I recall, that's not how that went. And there was actually a picture where it was shown that they had this 21 plus wristband on one of their one of the one of their wrists. So from my perspective, it's a bunch of 21 plus year olds hanging out. So yeah, I think you misinterpreted it. It is clear that she sent the message in the chat, obviously it being her hand, no room for confusion on it being my hand, and once again, he was not even in the group chat to see it, only Clay. Well, okay, when he saw it, according to what he said, he saw that and he assumed that it was just a group full of 21 plus year olds. He wasn't specifically saying, oh, Katie was over 21 years old and that was her, that hand and that wristband was hers. Like, no, he never said that. And even if he just assumed we were all 21 because one of us was, all these assumptions could have been cleared up pretty quick with a question. The party we were at where the wristband talk initiated from was an 18 plus party that you needed a band to enter. We had asked people around us for a wristband to enter the party, not a 21 wristband to drink. As you see in the pictures, a 21 wristband was given by staff after seeing ID and after entry. The wristbands we were all asking around for and searching for was just entry to the party. Even if he thought I was asking around for a 21 wristband, band, that would only prove that I was underage. Again, neither guys were at the party. We didn't end up staying at that party because we couldn't get wristbands for everyone. Only a few of us got in. My one friend gave theirs to me so I could walk in and see a creator party for the first time, but I left immediately after taking a video or two knowing Ghosty and other friends were sitting outside, unable to get in. With the wristbands cut off by staff as we left, I didn't even have a party wristband on anytime I met with them after in the room, let alone a 21 age one. I beg you all to watch my vlog from VidCon documenting video of this party and the wristbands being cut off in the vlog. So yeah, we get that, but like, that doesn't mean he couldn't have made a mistake and assumed that everybody was over the age of 21. But you want to know somebody who did know your age? You, yourself, and you willingly decided to drink on your own terms. That's how I'm hearing it. So I don't see how this is his fault. Like at some point in your life, you have to be responsible for your own actions. Like they're acting as if this is like a huge gotcha moment or something because he mistakenly mistakenly thought that everybody was 21 plus when her being a legal adult at the age of 18 knowing that oh you have to be 21 years old to drink at least legally she still decided to go ahead and drink on her own terms like she was not forced to drink and from what i've seen it definitely does not look like she was forced to drink like you easily could have denied the alcohol but what did you do instead you decide to drink like i don't see how that's his responsibility i really don't let alone that you're a legal adult 18 years old like be a fucking grown-up i thought she was 21 the girl girl who left early also sent me this message today. It is her conversation with Clay that night before she left the room as she recalls it to a friend a few days later. And then here's a screenshot in which whoever this is says, I'm guessing it's the friend. I typed a message on my phone and showed it to Clay being like, does George realize there's eight years between him and Katie? And he like looks at me deadpan and is like, I don't see why it matters. I'm like, oh, okay. Again, hearsay. And I'm taking it with a grain of salt. This is not evidence. But also at the same time in this context, it seems like they're trying to make this like, I don't know, there's a problem with the age gap or something. That's what they're like. They're not talking about the alcohol. I believe that most likely they thought the age gap was pretty weird. And apparently since she was freshly 18, quote unquote, in a way they were trying to say that like, that's like a really bad thing or like that's weird. And I mean, okay, eight years when you're an adult, it's not the worst thing ever. Now, if she was under 18, okay, I would understand. Lock them up, throw away the key. But that here is not the case. He was drunk, so I do not fault him for what he may have responded with, as maybe he wasn't thinking right, as I had not been able to while intoxicated. This is also her recalling, so it could be wrong or untruthful, and that's why I'm not believing it immediately off the bat, but I don't believe she has a reason to lie simply messaging a friend a few days later. Well, I mean, you can believe that all you want, but I'm not believing that, especially when at the time of the text and up until I came public about it, she didn't even know anything happened that night. She left before. So yeah, once again, I'm not believing this 
evidence. This is not like proof. This is hearsay and there's nothing backing it up. That night, the game we were playing asked who was last to lose their virginity, aka youngest. This is when I said me because I was 18 and still a virgin. This is also when Clay chimed in to argue for his best friend and say along the lines of, well, he almost lost his virginity at 19. You aren't that old yet, so he technically wouldn't still drink and he drank. I assume this meant he was listening, but maybe he wasn't. I remember this question because of text I sent and because it's something I'll never forget. Yes, I know it's hard to remember a question like that thinking back now, but that night he couldn't have forgotten it that quick. Remembering back to my answer just an hour, minutes prior before making a move didn't seem impossible. With him saying I didn't remember what happened that night and nitpicking my story apart with his great drunk memory, I wonder how he can't remember the most important part of it all, aka me saying my age. I don't think he's dumb. I think even if he was talking to somebody, especially in Insta DMs, he would check for age or at least see a bio. Someone who is so concerned about consent wouldn't be so naive. Someone with such a big platform wouldn't risk it unless they knew they could pull the I don't know card. I mean, realistically, you trying to put things together that you just don't know about is not helping the situation at all. Just because the game asked who was last to lose their virginity and him knowing that you said you're 18 and you're a virgin, that doesn't necessarily mean that that influenced him to do anything. Like, why are we trying to put that together when we just do not know? It almost seems like we're trying to make him look like a bad person by trying to put this narrative together together that that is possibly why he did what he did. Like that's not going to help you in this situation. I hope you realize that. And with Dream chiming in saying, well, he lost his at 19. You aren't that old yet. So he technically would still drink. It's not him saying that so that George makes a move or something on you because he wants you to have the same experience or something. Like it seems like a reach. Her friends influenced her because they hate us. I wonder why their hatred grew because of what happened to me. Well, I mean, let me make this clear. I mean, you're saying that he touched you in areas that he shouldn't have and you never consented to that like sexual acts or anything like that but at the same time he's saying with his story he never went into those areas and he just had his hand under your shirt on your waist like you could have had a problem with that but to say it's sexual assault or something no it's not these situations always end in victim blame if i didn't do this she shouldn't have worn that she shouldn't have been drinking she was asking for it we are embedded into a society to cover for assault it's what we are built on it's easy to say what i should have done looking from the outside not being being the one in the situation in the moment, it's also easier to think of how I could have gotten out of the situation now that I'm not in it. And now that I'm sober and can make clear choices, I want the situation to circle back the original point to make aware the reality that many girls face in this community, that many people are forced into silence. It's not petty drama, but real life people that have been affected with an A. I just don't want victims to feel they have to prove themselves to be believed, that they are only valid if they have proof. I believe you. My my story was a bit different because it was on such a wide scale with a big audience. Yes, I know I do not owe it. Victims don't owe anything to anyone. But with my unique situation, I had to give proof nonetheless, considering the circumstances. I'll accept if people don't believe me. I've said all there is. Then she goes on to talk about how she doesn't like people who make false allegations against other people and that they're scum, blah, blah, blah. It makes it harder for real victims to come forward. She goes on to talk about how she finds it funny when people claim victims do this for clout. She says, I can promise you anyone who had come forward about something like this knows the large sum of what you receive is endless hate. I mean, regardless of that, you're still getting attention. And in your case, you really didn't get a lot of hate. But I mean, it makes it worse when you don't provide receipts to what you're saying, not even one screenshot until the person who's being accused of these bad things makes a response and shows receipts. And then you start showing receipts because if you don't, then nobody's going to believe you. And I mean, me personally, I don't think you were doing it for clout. I think you were just trying to ruin him like indirectly. He goes on to say, this is the only proof proof or response I have as I don't have enough energy and have said all I have to say. She talks about how she will not be responding to any further responses made and she will be taking a break. She talks about how she hoped that people would realize how many unknown things go on behind the scenes and how dangerous blind idolization is. I do agree with that one. Like you shouldn't just idolize these people because you have no idea if like they're shitty people behind the scenes. Like I've talked about this many times and that is something I do agree on. And most importantly, this isn't a one-time thing. The larger creators that have reached out about their own stories concerning them and they're still too scared of them to come forward. They make me sick. Women who have been friends with them, people I watch, people I've never spoken to, and people I have. This is so much bigger than me and I wish they find peace. I hope they find peace too if this shit actually happened to them. And if there are people in the Minecraft community with more skeletons in their closet, I would love to see them get exposed for it and I would love for the world to see how bad of people these guys are. But in this case, I don't know how bad of a person George 
is. And frankly, he hasn't been proven guilty. There's a reason why people have distanced themselves from these men. There's a reason other creators act like they do. My experience is simply the only one public and no creator owes it to anyone to share their experiences with them. I just wish it was more obvious seeing the people who have distanced themselves and the people who still surround them to this day. I will be away for a week and then I will stream a final statement. So once again, you can hear my voice in sincerity and probably my final statement on it all. I want to continue my content, blah, blah. You get, you get how that goes. Don't want this to define me. Yeah, you get it. I wish the best for you all and healing. Now, man, I'll just be honest with you. That was a huge headache, but we got through all of it. And it looks like George has a response to this. He made a tweet when this came out. He looked at it and he said, since reading Katie's new post, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced new information that I was not aware of at all before. I have much more to say, but for now, Katie, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I really hope you can hear my words and try to understand that I did not have any bad intentions. That does not change the fact that you were hurt. I will be saying more soon. Now, I'm not really sure what George thinks he's doing here, but apologizing? Why are you apologizing? You're admitting guilt right there. I mean, if you said that this stuff did not go down, like you didn't sexually assault her, why would you put out something like this saying your perspective on that night changed and there was new information that was introduced that you were not aware of before? Like, are you trying to throw away your side of the story because you think maybe being understanding and thinking you did something wrong when you really, eh, I mean, you, you did do stuff wrong, but you didn't SA anybody from what you said. But yeah, essentially what this tweet does in saying sorry, once again, admitting guilt, gives Twitter more ammo to go at you and to ruin you. So I really don't understand this. Like he doesn't even state that like he didn't SA her or anything in this tweet. So now people are going to do something similar to what they did with Wilbur and say, oh, George admitted to wrongdoing. And yeah, he definitely essayed her. Like that's what happens here. This is literally pulling a Wilbur. Like, why are you apologizing? That's the worst thing you can ever do. I mean, where, where's his PR team? Where's his legal team? Like, are they advising him to like do this or not do it? Or where are they? Because this is such a bad move. Even Larry's replied and he said, this is pathetic. Holy shit. That girl lied, manipulated and twisted so much shit against you in her recent response. What the fuck is this? I am so sorry. You people are completely pathetic. I do agree with that. Like he looks so good with his response and everything. And then she puts out her response where she twisted a lot of things. And she was also trying to throw whatever at the wall to make it stick to try and make him look bad. And in some parts of it, I talked about it like it was disingenuous. And then George goes on to make a response to Katie's post. And he says, my perspective on that night and my overall conclusion has massively changed as she introduced a new information that I was not aware of at all. Like, why? Why would you say that? That's insane. Honestly, when it comes down to all of this, I have no sympathy for any of these fucking people, dude. I swear to God. It's just, how can you be this fucking stupid? Your career is on the line and you're just doing shit like this. Like, if these people are going to accuse you of sexually assaulting somebody, despite the fact that you know you did not do that, why would you try to feel for them and what happened and blah, 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 when that wasn't even the case? Like, these people are trying to destroy you and you're just going to let them? Like, this is so bizarre to me. And I'm not sure if I've made this aware to anybody who's watching, except I think I have a few times in comments. I don't like any of these people. And I'm trying to defend the overall principle of everything because I really would hate to see a world where anybody can make like the most wild false allegation out there, ruin somebody's career and get away with it. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. I really don't care if George ruins his career at the end of the day, let alone that he's he's being so stupid here. But the reason why I'm being so critical of Katie here is because she showed no evidence in the beginning and she's adding things that don't need to be added to the story to try and character assassinate him. And I think it's wrong, let alone that we had people right after the allegations came out over on Twitter trying to crucify George and destroy his fucking career when he said he was going to make a response and he didn't make his response yet and then people were already trying to cancel him and ruin his career despite the fact that he hasn't even given his side of the story well as of that time it's just fuck it really is but when it comes down to George being stupid here I mean come on man like don't play into these people's game now just for the rest of the video I want to take a look at some of what other people had to say about this in the replies so you guys can just get a glimpse of what people are saying about this these are replies from under George's most recent response. And yeah, here we go. So many of us have been in this exact situation, trapped and uncomfortable and too afraid to speak up. Silence does not equal consent. My heart breaks for Katie. You're a creep. See, man, this is what happens. This is what happens when you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I made you feel that way or whatever. And you try to be positive and understanding, despite the fact that these people are claiming that you SA'd somebody. And by making this response, like it's only making you look worse. Like this does not help your case. And it's just, it's crazy, man. It really is. This seems like a private conversation. Why does everyone always take their prompts to Twitter? Exactly. Exactly. Like, why are we even hearing about this in the first place? Let alone that he was claiming that it wasn't sexual assault and that it was just a problem with, I guess, boundaries.
boundaries. And maybe he should have asked before he touched her, like at all, and even decided to put his hand around her waist. And it's like if you were comfortable when it happened, and then like later on, you grew to regret it and not enjoy it. Like all of this should have been talked out in DMs or like on a phone call or something with each other. Like we should not be hearing about this. My initial response to discredit and undermine didn't go well. So here's a half ass apology. See, this is literally why I said like his response is fucking it's stupid, especially if he knows that he did not do the sexual assault, because that's what this is all about. Like if she didn't say she was sexually assaulted by him, there still would be a problem, but there wouldn't be as big of a problem and more people would be understanding, I guess. But yeah, no, this is serious. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what George is doing. Don't believe a word George is saying. Watch this video. And um, I asked Katie if she thought that uh, this was okay to say. I have complete permission from Katie to speak about this whenever she's drunk, uh, usually. Uh, she's very cheery and she loves her friends. And so when I saw her down, I knew it was for a reason. Um, I walked over to her and uh, I, I comforted her and I said, Katie, like, what's wrong? Why are you, why are you sad? I don't, you know, we're, we're with all our friends. What's, what's the matter? And um, something uh, I'd never really spoken about this is that Katie, uh, as I hugged Katie, Katie, like, uh, through tears, um, like, tried to cough up that um, George Not Found had assaulted her. And um, and I, I, I never wanted to bring it up to her because I, I could see how sensitive it was. And I knew she told it to me while she was under the influence. But um, it's just wrong. It's fucking wrong that uh, they're trying to use their platform to make this narrative like Katie's mind changed. Somebody changed Katie's mind after the fucking assault to make them look bad. I was there three weeks after Katie was assaulted by George Lafound for four fucking weeks or whatever. And she cried in my fucking arms. This 19 year old girl, 18 year old girl. She cried in my fucking arms because of what you did, George Lafound. I'm serious. I'm fucking serious. No one had changed her mind. No one. She, this was a fucking horrible thing to have happened to her. And to, and to try, to try and use me. Okay, this seriously just screams pandering. This might actually be way worse than dreams pandering. And second of all, it's like he's saying this and believing this at face value, despite the fact that there has not been evidence that she has proven to make him guilty and to show he actually did the sexual assault. And according to his claims, that's not how it went. And regardless of him being stupid, this clip doesn't show anything. And it's just something that somebody is saying, also known as hearsay. Now, anyways, I think that's enough for the replies to his tweet. Him giving an apology was a really fucking stupid idea. And at this point, I really don't know what's going to happen from here. Now for this video, I wasn't really expecting it to go that far because I just saw her response on Twitter as of recording this video. And I said in my last video that I was going to be covering what Dream had to say about this. But while I was making this video, it was all unfolding further. So I just figured I'm not going to include that stuff in this video. I actually might include it in my next video. I might make a whole nother video that hopefully is under 10 minutes and I should go over that. So yeah, look out for that. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. And yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, as more of this unfolds, I will make another video talking about the situation and another response from KD or George, if that ever comes up or if something big happens regarding that, I will make another video about it. So yeah, if you happen to enjoy this video, you thought it was informative, you liked it, you liked my thoughts on the situation, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so the video gets promoted more in the algorithm so more people will see it. Thank you guys so much for being a member. I really do appreciate your support and it does mean the world to me. And hopefully this time I include that screenshot. But yeah, anyways, besides all of that, my name is Brie and I will see you in my next video. Peace.